Hello, this video is going to be motherly advice and my own opinion about what has gone wrong with modern feminism, what to look for, men, what to look for in a woman that is going to give you a healthy, nourishing relationship. And ladies, if you're looking for some ideas of how to be a respectable woman who is in a healthy place for a relationship, or just a healthy woman, these are the criteria that I think are important. And these are my opinions, and you're free to disagree with me. This is based on my own life experience. I'm a 61-year-old woman. I was married 25 years. I have three wonderful children. And since I have been divorced the past 10 years, I have had the opportunity to meet many people. Uh, many single people, mar many married people through practicing my coaching and just having some friends and having to end a lot of my friendships with women because I was raised by like a very sweet mother who loved me and I did not know that there were so many dysfunctional women out there. And I can see why men are having issues. So uh, I look at my my own children and their significant others and they're healthy so I made a list of healthy uh, you know what are the characteristics of a healthy woman versus a woman that has issues because I hear about these men like oh you know don't get married because you're gonna get knocked out in divorce court I didn't do that to my husband when I divorced I know other women who didn't do that to their husbands or You'll never see your kids again. I didn't do that to my husband. Now, a lot of other women I know didn't do that to their husbands. They're co-parenting amicably. So what's the difference between women who cheat on you, take you for all your money, don't let you see your kids, who are selfish bitches, and women who are actually nourishing? Now, here's the thing, though. A lot of men don't want healthy, nourishing women. To the extent that men are wounded, they're going to pick wounded women. And to the extent that we as women are wounded, we're going to pick wounded men. Because we go for what's familiar, what's comfortable, and all the intimacy we can handle. But here's my list. Um, I'm going to go back into the childhood, you guys. The biggest predictor of someone who is fucked up is they grew up not feeling loved by one or both of their parents. This is important. They grew up not feeling loved by one or both of their parents. And so they had unhealthy role models for how relationships are and they had to develop coping mechanisms as children which have to do with a lot of avoiding, deflecting, and coping mechanisms that can often be hostile and their amygdala and their brain develop in such a way that they can be on constant alert or they use fawning mechanisms or avoidance or deflection. And even those people who've done a lot of therapy, it can take them years to be in a healthy place. What does that look like? Unhealthy, uh, not loved by one or both of their parents. One or both parents were alcoholics, drug addicts. Uh, abusive, verbally abusive, emotionally abusive, sexually abusive, or the parent neglected to protect the child so that the child was sexually abused by someone else, a friend of the family, a relative, and the parents kind of turned an eye to it. They didn't want to address it or see it or said it never really happened. It could also be that the parents were drug addicts and abandoned the kids to be raised by an aunt, a grandparent. These people, in every case that I've known, have severe emotional issues. Severe. So I wouldn't go on a first date and be like, hey, were you loved by one or both of your parents? I would just say, hey, tell me what was Christmas like or tell me something you did with your mom. Or when you go to their house, notice if they have up any pictures of their parents and which ones and which parent they never want to talk about. The parent they never want to talk about. This is huge, you guys. You cannot overlook the factor of this. 
So I'm going to say it again. The biggest predictor of someone who is going to fuck up your marriage and your life and make you miserable is if you marry a woman, ladies, the same goes if you marry a man, who felt unloved by her father and or her mother. Okay. So, um, what to look for in a healthy woman? Okay, so a healthy woman, if when you go to her house, it's clean. She's not a hoarder. She's not messy. She's got her life in order. She pays her bills on time. Now, I'm going to say there can be some allowance made for women in their 20s who are still discovering their voice. And a lot of these women, you want to go more towards the side of a woman who is a people pleaser and who's going to learn as she matures to find her voice. But if you've got a woman who's already super aggressive, stay away from that. Okay, she might still be figuring out how to keep her word and how to be accountable. There can be some missteps. But you want to look for someone who can take accountability and who wants to deal with things and not be like, well, it's all your fault. Okay, so um, account you want to look for someone who's accountable and responsible. She's gone to college or she has a trade. She expects to provide for herself. Because the days of a man who can provide for a family are long gone. And there is no Prince Charming. And she knows this. And she takes responsibility for herself. So she, she pursues a, a career or a trade or a way to support herself. And she supports herself. She's not looking for a sugar daddy. She's not looking for a caretaker. Because she takes responsibility for herself. And that might mean her life is kind of hard. She may not have found her passion yet, but she works. She either has a job or she's a student or she's a mom. And she does these to the best of her ability. Not perfectly, but she takes pride in what she does. She likes relationships and wants to contribute to the relationship. She's into self-improvement. She values fitness and a healthy lifestyle. If you get with a woman who does not value fitness or a healthy lifestyle, your relationship is going to suck. She's going to gain a lot of weight and she's going to get depressed. So you want to look for someone who eats well, values sleep, and values exercise. And this is what I'm talking about women in their 20s here too. She knows how to keep a home. She pays her bills on time. She likes the outdoors. She has some decent social skills. She might not... She might still have some social anxiety as she's younger and not quite yet confident in herself. But she's not like afraid of people to the point that she doesn't leave her house, okay? Another important thing you want to look for, you want to look for a woman who wears little or no makeup. I mean, you can look at those Instagram models, okay? But they're not wife material. Little to no makeup. Any woman who wears a lot of makeup or has done plastic surgery is a super red flag. But I'm going to get into that in the red flags. She wears little or no makeup and she has a natural look about herself. And remember, you've got to like the way she looks without makeup because that's how she's going to look around the house. That's how she's going to look when she wakes up in the morning. So if you're a guy who doesn't like women who look natural with no makeup, some of you guys are not going to like these women I'm describing because you want the drama and you want the mess. And that's fine, but that's why your relationship is going to have problems. Okay, um, a healthy woman is more on the monogamy side or is monogamous. It's not in the nature of us as women to want to fuck a bunch of guys. And so any you want to look for a woman who is modest in her appearance, who doesn't show her body to just every guy. Um, she wants to know a man or be in a relationship before she has sex. So she, because the, all the healthy women I know, they, they, have a, they have standards and requirements to be sexually involved with a man, okay? This woman also has some hobbies and some interests other than posting pictures on Instagram. She, she can laugh because she's happy. She's actually happy, like she can laugh. She laughs at your jokes. She's interested in you. She listens. She actually can listen. It's not just all about talking and getting attention. She's considerate of you. If she drinks, she drinks in moderation. She doesn't get drunk or have blackouts, okay? Um, dresses modestly with little or no makeup, even at the gym. She's not showing her tits or her ass sticking out. 
no fake breasts, no fake lips, like natural. Um, she provides for herself. And she likes doing things for her man. A healthy woman likes doing things for a man. She likes to cuddle with him and cook for him and remember things he likes. And, you know, she remembers he likes this candy. So she buys that candy at the store and she likes to pick up his dry cleaning and she likes to know what matters to him and listen to him talk and respect his opinions. Uh, she cooks for dinner what he likes to eat. You know, she enjoys his company. Uh, uh, a healthy woman is going to want to cook for you. Look for that. Definitely. If you take her out to dinner, she's going to want to cook for you. Uh, she has friends. And her friends are healthy. They're not alcoholics. And they don't have revolving doors of men. They're healthy. She puts her phone away on dates and she likes to learn. These are just some things I thought of pretty on, off the bat. Um, I might have left something out. Hopefully I didn't leave out anything that's super important. I mean, she has a car. She drives. She goes places. She, like, she's happy with her life. You know, she's fun. Okay. Now, here are the things I've seen in women that I didn't initially realize were red flags for being friends, but these are women that I've known that were friends with me or that I made friends with. And then I realized, whoa, these women have a lot of issues. So I'm very leery of women who are over 40 who were never married and have no kids. Because it's in the nature of women, we want to we wanna nourish and we want to have kids. Even if she can't have her own kids, she ought to be like the auntie or she ought to maybe i don't know if she can't have kids i'm not going to hold that against her but the women that don't want kids like why why do you hate kids why do you not want to nourish kids like that's in our nature to want to have children and raise children so it's just something to be aware of if there was none of that because there was probably some abuse uh she probably doesn't feel good about her own childhood there's something off there a woman who doesn't want kids or something off I'm going to just tell you that right up. Uh, if she is financially dependent, if she's over 30 and still living at home, because she hasn't, she can't, she has an inability, she's not an adult. An adult has a car, has a home, keeps the home clean, drives, cooks her meals, like pays her bills on time. That was in the yes list. But a woman who can't do that is very unstable, unsta unstable. Um, now I'm not going to say it's a bad thing to have three generations in one home. It's kind of sweet, but it's not really typical in our country. So just, uh, put a flag there. I've known women who lived at home or who, they usually have a inability to, um, the ones I've known, they have an inability to, um, conduct themselves in the world by working. So they're relying on a handout. They're a little unstable, a little unstable. Why can't you get up and go to work? And these women also don't go to the gym. A woman, another, okay, this is my no list. Okay, never married, no kids, lives at home, doesn't want kids. She's looking for a caretaker. If she's looking for a caretaker, she doesn't give a shit about relationships. She just wants someone to take care of her. And initially it might be fun, you might think it's super cute, but it's going to wear on you because now you're responsible for her finances, for her emotions, for her moods, and for everything because you have just adopted a baby. Um, and those women are more likely to cheat on you, those women are more likely to use you, those women are the ones who are going to take all your money in the divorce and take your kids from you because they never cared about you and they don't care about relationships. They want a caretaker. So you're just an object. She doesn't have any empathy. I should have put empathy on the yes list. A woman who has empathy and who can deal with conflict. Okay, a no list. An attention-seeking woman. She's super loud. She's super gregarious. She wears really... She talks in a really loud voice. She dresses very flashy, very sexual. 
um, has everything sticking out, showing her short skirts and high heels. She wants to be noticed. She's posting her photos all over social media to get sexual attention from men. And um, she talks, she doesn't listen, she doesn't remember what you said. It's all about her, her, her. She needs constant attention. It's very needy. Also, women who live in their van. I have seen these women. I have known some of these women on Facebook. They live in the van because they're hip. Well, you're 40, okay? Uh, I'm just saying, nothing against the van life. I'm just saying that um, there's some emotional instability there, okay, when they live in their vans. And when they go to nude beaches, I knew this woman, she was in her 40s. She thought it was super cool to live in her van and um, go to the nude beach. And if she saw some young guy that just warmed her heart and her tantric energy, she would take him in the van and fuck him. But her life was a wreck. So I'm going to add no to the no list. Women who go to ecstatic dances, who go to the nude beach, who go to cuddle parties, and who are polyamorous because... Normal women are not trying to show their body to random men or have random men cuddle them. Like, that's just weird. They're always turned out to be weird, these women. That's what I'm saying. Again, my opinion. Also, purple hair. Purple hair, green hair, blue hair. Uh, a lot of tattoos. I'm not going to tattoo shame people, but all the normal women I know, they don't have tattoos, okay? <laughs> like... Every woman I know who's had tattoos has had issues. That's what I'm saying. You know, I, there's a correlation, okay? Plastic surgery, no list, duck lips, fake breasts, um, hair extensions, fake eyelashes. All this fake stuff is a woman who is not comfortable with herself. So she's putting on, on it's a mask. It's all a mask. I don't like who I am, so I'm going to change it, but it doesn't change who she feels inside. Also, any kind of mental health issues like um, borderline personality disorder, anxiety, depression, um, phobia, social anxiety, all red flags. Ask her what kind of medication she's on. Like, normal women don't need to be on medications. I'm not on any medications. Like, it's not supposed to be normal that people are taking medications for their mental health. Those people are just going to be difficult in a relationship. That's all I'm saying. Every woman I've ever known with purple or blue hair grew up sexually abused. Okay, it's just weird. I'm just going to say it straight up. It's just weird. So much weirdness out there. Any woman who doesn't realize she's a woman, any woman who's dating trans people, it's all weird. It's weird. Um, oh, okay. So with men, a mask that men wear is charisma and charm. The masks that women wear are overly sexual and overly sweet. The women I know who have issues, and a lot of them have already worked on it, but some of them haven't, they'll do weird things. Like, even with me, they'll come right up to me and look at me and be like, oh, and this is what I want to tell you. Uh, they, get, they bring this intensity, this uninvited intensity. Oh, and this is what I want to tell you. You know, they... They, they can shift from an instant of just talking to you, then all of a sudden they bring this intensity. Yes. Or they start out when they first meet me, the women that first meet me, and they're super excited, they're super charming, they're all friendly and bubbly and smiley and charismatic and sensual and sexual. These women were all sexually abused, super red flags. The normal way for a woman to get to know a man is we kind of want to sit back and get to know you, kind of open up to you, figure you out, and gradually get closer as we trust you. But this instant excitement over you, this over-the-top excitement, or this over-the-top sexuality or intensity, it's always a red flag. And this is something I only learned recently. Also, women who always speak in a very soft voice. It's also a mask because their soft voice or telling you they're an empath is to mislead you so that you won't challenge them. And it's also a coping mechanism that they learn that they think people, it's kind of a control mechanism. If I just speak nice and sweetly, then nobody will 
expect too much of me and they kind of hide behind the soft sweet voice but if you ever challenge them on anything that whole thing drops or they might still speak sweetly but they'll say nasty things in that sweet voice it's the same as when I'm on online and looking at guys profiles and every photo they're smiling not because they're laughing but even that would be weird but they're like this like I'm only acceptable if I smile because they're not comfortable being real if I don't know that you're real, then I don't even know who you are. It's like freaky, freaky weird. A woman who's overly sexual is a super red flag because women who are sexually abused are often overly sexual or they're completely asexual, but overly sexual is like, okay, I got my power back or I'm going to get back at you or I'm just going to use you for sex the way I was used. They're going to cheat on you. They don't know how to pair bond. They're, um, they don't value any other parts of themselves. And they can only, we can only value in you what we value in ourselves. So overly sexual is not good. I know a lot of guys want a woman who's overly sexual, but that's not really in our nature. I mean, okay, when we grew up in tribes millions of years ago, however many years ago, and women had sex with all the men in the tribes, but they were not strangers. They were men that they knew. Like, it's just not normal for women to go around having sex with strangers. It's just weird. To, uh, to lead with their sexuality. Women who are confused about their gender. Women who are on meds for mental health issues. Women who are alcoholics. If they, she has to get drunk every night, if she has blackouts, it's a huge fucking red flag. Any women use, woman using drugs, I could see someone who smokes weed at bedtime, I do that, okay? I could see maybe someone who wants to occasionally take mushrooms once a year or every two years. But if you get someone who takes drugs, no. Um, ooh, here's a big one. Her kids don't like her. This is a huge fucking red flag. If a woman's kids don't like her, run. It's a hugest red flag ever, ever, ever. There's no relationship that is more naturally loving than a mother towards her children. And for the children to turn against her, she had to be a real bitch, really selfish or abusive or bitchy or abandon them. Children do not naturally turn against their parents. Oh, she has multiple baby daddies. You're the next baby daddy. A uh, history of unstable relationships. Okay. Um, weird filters on her phone. She doesn't post real photos. They're all photoshopped and edited and they got, I don't know what all the weird stuff is. I am not into that. A lack of sexual boundaries, that was the poly, the cuddle, the ecstatic dance, the nude beach. Um, oh, when she got divorced, she nailed her ex on the alimony and the child support. She's vindictive. She has a bad ex. Now that you just got a bunch of baggage and drama to deal with. And she has a bad relationship with her kids. That's it. Now... The thing with guys is, and the thing with women too, is that a lot of us are attracted to the people who are like very good looking on the outside, great package on the outside. But the thing I've realized is that the people who are extremely good looking and charming are a great danger to our personal lives, okay? They're a great danger to our personal lives. Why? Because these people never had to work on their personality or face anything. I've had to work on my personality, okay? I had some issues. I used to be a little bit more angry. I didn't always express my feelings properly. But I also knew from the time I was little, I was raised that I should be pretty nice, pretty nice and intelligent. Those were the traits my parents told me were important. I think that's a good list for a woman. Pretty nice and intelligent. And be a good mom and a good homemaker too. Take good care of my husband. Take good care of my kids. But, um, I forgot what I was saying. I think that, oh, uh, I lost my train of thought. I mean, people don't have to be perfect, but, 
to the extent that people pick someone who has a lot of these red flags, it's just going to make the relationship harder. And um, I mean, I grew, I, I was born in the 60s. I grew up, you know, I mean, when I met my husband, it was long before cell phones. And I think that, oh, you know, I totally lost my train of thought. Um, another thing, so I'm just going to uh, switch gears here. Another thing that's super important to look for in friendships, and the list I gave you is for friends or for dating men. men it's for dating or for friendships with women. Uh, and ladies, this is a good list to have for being friends with women because you want to have stable friends. And stable people are really not that easy to find always. Um, you also want to look very early on when you meet someone, how they deal with conflict. Okay, when you bring something up, are they able to handle it and thank you for bringing it up? Or are they going to avoid, deflect, become the victim? Um, how good are they at repair? Do they want to repair the friendship? Or do they just not want to deal with things? It's super important for a healthy relationship. A healthy relationship, like Eckhart Tolle says, it has to have a spiritual element. You have to be able to see the heart and the higher dimension in the other person. So you have to have like a spiritual practice, a religious practice, a presence practice. Because if the other person is just an object, the woman who's just your arm candy or the man who's just the guy who pays your bills or takes care of you, um, the relationship can't last. Eckhart Tolle says that, and I agree with him. Oh, another thing on the yes list, you want a woman who's comfortable being at home. She loves being at home. Sure, she can go out, but most of the time she likes to be at home. Someone who has to constantly travel or who constantly has to have something going on. These women that want to live in three different countries and live here and switch houses all the time. It creates a lot. I think it creates a lot of instability. Maybe you guys like the excitement of that, but I kind of like, like a very stable life. That gives me the structure, you know, so I can know when I have my workouts and when I'm going to get up and have my food here. I just think that women who are, all I'm saying is that women who love being home, um, who enjoy taking trips, but who love being at home. And I don't like traveling, by the way. I don't, but I know other health, I know other healthy women who do like traveling, but they also love being at home. Any woman who doesn't love being at home, I think is a red flag. Like, why don't you love being at home? Have you never had a home? Because if a woman grew up with a, a, a happy, healthy home, she's going to copy that and emulate that. And she's going to want a happy, healthy home. Like my home is clean. I like cleaning my house. I want it clean. I don't necessarily love to cook, but I'll do it. We're not looking for perfection. We're looking for people who are, or you have a good chance of having a decent relationship. Oh, I was, this is what I was going to say. So the guys who are the really good looking people never had to work on anything because they were never challenged because if someone dumps them they can always get someone else and so their personality isn't as good all right so you can't just go by their looks i had a dating coach once and she told me to date someone who's a seven out of ten and see if he can become my my eight or nine or my ten as getting to know him over time uh, the people are really good looking, are really red flag. Another thing I've seen in women at the gym, they do this thing. Have you ever seen guys at the gym who like overdevelop their arms and they look like a Dorito chip? Well, women are doing what I call the baboon butt. Have you ever seen the baboons with the pink butt? And just like this brown baboon with this huge pink butt. Like, look at my asshole. Okay, a lot of women are like, look at my asshole. Look at my big butt. And they're going to the gym and they're over focusing on their butt to make the butt look big. It looks stupid. It's weird. Like no healthy woman does that, okay? It's just weird. There's a lot of weird stuff out there and in the name of acceptance, we're supposed to accept it, but these people all have issues. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, 
so in the comments i would love to hear your comments about other things i've left out or what you think are qualities that you can see right off the bat in a in photos or seeing a woman you don't have to get to know her for years of marriage to see if she's a problem uh the qualities that make someone um be uh like a healthy what's good what's a healthy woman what does she bring to the table what is she about what does she value okay that's what and what are the things that are red that are indicators to this woman has issues okay this woman is emotionally healthy and this woman has issues and this is the list i came up with this is my list and i would love for you to add to this list um, especially at a time when women are very confused. And um, one more thing I do want to say is that there was a time when the man was the provider and of the money and the woman was the provider of the home life, the cooking, the cleaning, the children, and there was a lot to do. Um, and now we are in a knowledge economy where people are making money by using their brain, not their bodies. So... Who are the richest men? They're no, they're no symbol of masculine strength. We've got Bill Gates, Elon Musk, um, maybe, um, uh, I mean, look at Biden. You know, like we don't have, uh, who else? Um, these guys that don't really, but it used to be in olden times that, you know, it was the strong men that, were like the heroes of society. Like things have changed a lot. People have lost their weight. But I will tell you that we're still animals. On a sexual level, we are still animals. And a healthy woman, oh, one more thing. A healthy woman wants a man who is dominant sexually. If a woman needs a man who's submissive, she always has emotional issues. Like it's weird to want a man who's submissive. The other things that are weird are women who are into BDSM. I'm not gonna sex shame people for having uh, wanting to get into variety, but I've never met a woman who is into BDSM or a man who is into BDSM or in that community who is normal. They're all weird, to me weird. Now, I, I grew up in the suburbs, okay? My dad was a doctor, my stepmom is a doctor, my mom, like I just grew up with like, my grandparents were entrepreneurs, like I'm more like a traditional uh, person. My marriage was traditional. I like a man to take the lead. I like a man to be dominant in bed. But I also like to be equally empowered and pay my own way and have my own freedom. So uh, I'm not looking for a man to like be my sugar daddy or um, be responsible for me. So, But there's just a lot of weirdness out there. Um, again, don't look for people who are like super hot because that's just good for a night and maybe not even then because they're crazy in bed watch out for women who want to be slapped in bed okay who want to be choked in bed uh who are very crazy in bed because that doesn't last and they all have mental health issues like it's just not normal there's just so much weird stuff out there and uh i'm making this video finally because I didn't know there was so much weirdness out there. Um, and also, you know, there's just so much emphasis on like we should be accepting. I think the whole trans thing is weird. I remember when I was younger, the teenage girls, like it's a very difficult time being a woman and a man going through puberty, I'm sure. But as a woman, you know, I'm just this kid and all of a sudden I'm developing breasts and I don't want them. So I'm trying to hide them. Because I'm ashamed of having them. And then men are sexualizing me. I'm at 13 years old. And my friend's dad, who used to just think of me as a little kid, is looking at my body. Because, you know, he can't help it. Like, I had a butt and a breast and everything. And I could see that he was taken by it. But uh, at the same time, I'm just a kid. And now I'm supposed to, like, own... Like, it's just weird. And a lot of women... Uh, you know, they struggle through this time. So there's a lot of cutting. There was cutting was a big thing. And then anorexia was a big thing. And now trans is a big thing. And, um, 
and you know the the schools aren't helping things the liberals aren't helping things by normalizing the confusion that kids have and then there's all this gender confusion it used to be that a man could provide for a family on his income uh, but that's not possible anymore the world has changed so we cannot look there is no sugar daddy there is no prince charming there is no princess charming okay there is no such thing as the magical woman who's going to suck your dick every day and love it like that's not real life she's not going to want to do that every day okay and she's going to want to and and um uh, you know, you want to have a lot of sex, don't get married because it's not going to be every day, okay? Um, unless you know how to keep her turned on. Like, people are not, people are complicated and relationships are complicated and people can annoy each other over time, especially when they live together. So I think the most important thing for a relationship is to get someone that you're really, really attracted to so that you're willing to work through the stuff that comes up and to pick someone really healthy because there's already going to be disagreements already. So if you want a peaceful life and a happy life, then just pick somebody who's healthy. Um, and these are some of the things I figured out. I had no idea that there was so much dysfunction in the world. Of course, I could have dysfunction too. I don't see my own, but I think my list is pretty solid. And... Um, for me, I'd rather be alone than be with somebody who's got issues. I just recently dropped a couple girlfriends, okay? Um, and they, they, they both had childhood trauma. So that's why I put that at the top of my list. I had no idea before how important that was. Um, I'm realizing more and more how important the childhood is. And if the child, if the children did not, child did not, person did not feel loved by both parents, they have a lot of therapy to do. And that can take many years. Okay. If they've just done one or two years, they can still going to have issues. Um, and I don't want to be around any people with issues. I don't have any issues. I don't want to deal with anyone else's issues. Okay. So I'm just getting to the place where I'm like, okay. I don't like how this is, so I, this person can't be my friend instead of I should put up with this, I should be okay with this, I should figure out how to get over this to maintain the friendship. Not all friendships are worth maintaining, not all friendships are worth having. Like, friendships should be easy and fun. And if a problem comes up, it should be a legitimate problem um, that has a resolution where things move forward, okay? But some people are just not capable of that because of the childhoods that they had. So I really hope you guys like this video. I had a really fun time making it. And um, thank you again.